Okay, welcome to the remote learning drainage basins and watersheds of the United States and New York State activity. This is meant to accompany the worksheet that is available on Schoology, you know, right along with this link. So, um, if you haven't already opened it and printed it, or opened it up and screenshotted it to manipulate it, you know, please do so. And I'm going to try and work you through this to make it as easy as possible given our circumstances. So. Um, basic background of what we're doing here is we're we're going to be tracking water that's not sinking into the ground but rather running off it's a deeper dive into runoff and the terms drainage basin here in our vocabulary as well as watershed they're very similar terms they're, we're talking about areas that are drained but into one river right by one river and it's something known as a tributary so if i were to on the diagram highlight the major river here and the concept of a tributary being something that a river or a stream that flows into a larger river or stream. I'm going to again focus on the diagram. I'm going to trace all the other little rivers that are flowing into this. So this whole thing is your watershed within that area. And what's going to separate or divide one watershed from another is going to be this term divide, right? which is essentially just a high elevation area that's going to separate water, and I'm going to trace it on the diagram here. Boom. And that's going to separate one watershed from another. We do have a famous divide known as the Continental Divide, which separates water that's going to drain into the Pacific Ocean from water that drains into the Atlantic Ocean. All right. And uh, so, just uh, continuing on with some other important vocabulary terms here a river's source is where it begins and this is at a high elevation so when we're talking about up here in the diagram right that's the source where it begins and from there it's going to drain downward to the mouth which is where the river meets the ocean or the sea so down in this region of the diagram that's where we've got our mouth right where it opens up into the river or the sea <clears throat> This concept of a delta is something we're gonna we're gonna delve deeper into in geology, but it is a landform that is created by de deposition of sediment. Uh, all the stuff being carried by the river is gonna get dropped off there as the river runs into the uh, ocean or the sea and slows down. Again, we'll focus more on river deltas later on in geology, but stream discharge, which is essentially just the volume of water, that is also gonna be greatest at the mouth or found at the mouth uh, and it's greatest at the mouth because a tributary something that contributes water to the major river um, all that contribution by the time you get down to the end of the river system there's just the highest volume of water and so that's something we're going to need to also be aware of as we move forward all right so um, applied tasks here uh, if we look on to the next page we've got a map of the united states and we're going to be asked to um, find the Mississippi River, trace the Mississippi River with a blue colored pencil, and we're going to do the same for each tributary of the Mississippi River. So, Mississippi's here, and I'll do my best to stay on the line. Okay, there's the Mississippi River, and when we talk about uh, tributaries, those contribute to the Mississippi, so if you want to, anything that flows directly into it, and I'll start down there at the red and kind of work my way up one at a time. Each of these different rivers that flows into the Mississippi is a tributary. And I'll trace each of those. And the Missouri and the Platte. Missouri actually continues over here with the Yellowstone. And there we go. So those that's the Mississippi and each of its tributaries. And the last thing we're asked to do here is to, on this river system anyway, is to draw a loop around the Mississippi and then shade the whole region with uh, dark blue. So, if I pick a, this one, and I say, okay, there's, this is essentially going to be the divide. If you think back to our vocabulary terms, and I'll pick a lighter blue here, and now everything inside of that loop which if you look is most of the continental United States is the Mississippi River's drainage system. A drainage basin, watershed. Alright, 
So now we're going to do basically the same thing with a few other river systems. <clears throat> and the next one that we're asked to do here is the Columbia River. And we're going to do it in red. All right. So if I go and I find the Columbia River on the west coast, there's the Columbia River. It actually only has one tributary, the Snake River here. And that's that whole system. So if I do a loop around it, and then shade that in similar to what we just did with the Mississippi in blue. There's your Columbia River's drainage basin or watershed. Alright, so boom, we did shading already, and there we go. Cool. Uh, the next thing up, the next color, is going to be orange. And what's going on in orange is any of the things that flow into the Pacific, uh, the Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean, I'm just going to put PO over here for where the Pacific Ocean is. And so if you look, the Sacramento, let me pick an orange. It's uh, more orange. It's like the Sacramento River, the San Joaquin, look at the green, Colorado, and the Gila. And all those flowing directly into the Pacific Ocean. And we are then asked with yellow to do anything that's going to flow into the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico. So your Gulf of Mexico is right here. A little GM for that. The Atlantic Ocean is over here on the, off the East Coast. And so if I go pick a yellow, looks like I'm just going to have to stick with the highlighter. Um, we've got the Chattahoochee River, Susquehanna, Connecticut, the Brazos, the Picos and the Rio Grande. So all of those either flow directly into the Atlantic Ocean or into the Gulf of Mexico, which ultimately does open up into the Atlantic. Right. And the last task that we've got on this page is to use a green to label the continental divide. So uh, that would have to be, if you recall, when we we're doing our vocabulary, the continental divide. It separates stuff that flows into the Pacific versus the Atlantic Ocean. So, over here, the Pacific was the orange, you know, and the Columbia goes in there too. So, essentially, the orange and the red go into the Pacific, whereas the blue and the yellow are going into the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic. And so, I'm just going to draw a line here in green that separates those two areas. And this is where your continental divide would essentially be. Right? That's where the Rocky Mountains are. There's that high area that's going to divide stuff draining into the Pacific versus stuff draining into the Atlantic. Boom. All right. Moving on. Uh, this time, if you look right at the first thing, we've got a note here telling us that we're going to need pages 2 and 3 of your Earth Science Reference Table to help us out with this. So I've got them open over here. Um, oh no. Maybe we can just close that and then try to reopen it. Okay, so here we go. We've got uh, page three, page two. I'm going to start on page three as I know that's what I'm going to need. All right. One hiccup out of the way. All right, so what we're asked to do here now is we're going to, on this map that's provided here, the New York City, New York State drainage, um, you're going to have to find all of these and label them. I'm going to, um, I'm going to focus on the Hudson River first and there's I, I can't write smart small enough on my limitations and what I'm doing here on my iPad to, to do this clearly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight it in a similar color. The Hudson River, when we look in our reference table, we can see that the Hudson River, Hudson River, it's located all through here and it flows all the way through there. There's your Hudson River in New York State, right? So um, 
similar how I just used page three to find the Hudson River and traced it there for you to kind of say, oh, okay, on this map, that's going to be located here. Here's your Hudson River. You're going to have to do that and label it for each of these rivers in number one to find each of them on page three, label them on the map here. All right, so um, you're going to have to do all that. I'm only going to kind of start by showing you how the process is using your reference table there. But then we're going to trace not only the Hudson River, but all of its tributaries, similar to what we did in the last page here. So all of these other rivers that flow into the Hudson, we're going to trace those in the same color here with the green. And there's our Hudson River watershed. <clears throat> okay, uh, picking a different color. I'll switch over to yet blue. Another color, we're going to do the tributaries that flow into the Great Lake system. So Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, and the St. Lawrence River. And we're going to lightly shade that area of the two Great Lakes um, with this other color. I've chosen blue. So if you didn't already know, you can look in your reference table and we can see that, and I'll pick the same color blue, Lake Erie is over here, Lake Ontario is there, and the St. Lawrence River actually runs all along the northern border of the state right there. So that's what we're asked to do in this next task. And so here's Lake Erie, here's Lake Ontario, and here's the St. Lawrence River. And we want the tributaries too, so any and everything that flows into that, these locations. We're going to do those in blue. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And it looks like what we've got here. And cool. So, um, lightly shade in the Great Lakes there, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, and there's bullet point or task three. All right, and number four, it asks us to pick a third color, and so I'll just moving on over to pink here and we're going to do the streams that drain into Lake Champlain and using the same color we're going to lightly shade Lake Champlain again if you're not sure where Lake Champlain is page 3 in your reference table find Lake Champlain you'll see it's located right here and so back over to there See, that's this spot here. kind of looks like a ghost or something. Some squiggly arms with its tributaries and the legs. There's, uh, there's Lake Champlain's uh, and its tributaries. All right. Cool. Moving on. Uh, number five. We've got to pick another color. I'll go with orange. Uh, fourth color. The streams and tri tributaries of the Delaware and Susquehanna River systems. Okay, these ones are really subtle and small when we look on page three here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So the Delaware River actually is there. So these are the other streams that make up that system. And then the Susquehanna is only mentioned there. So on page three, that's how you're going to find those ones. Really subtle, very small. There it is. Back over to our task here in the activity. Looks like the Delaware and its accompanying streams were right here. The Susquehanna was here. And they're showing us a little bit more of it on this map. And so it looks like that would be all of it in this activity. Okay. And the last task here is to use a pen or a pencil to draw the approximate position of the divides of the major drainage systems. So I'm going to separate each color, right? So I'm going to separate the blue from everything else. That would be right through here. I'm going to separate the orange from everything else, which looks like that would be done through there. The green would be separated through here. And the pinky one up there. All right, there you go. There's your New York State drain systems, watersheds. Okay. I think we do have a few wrap-up questions on the back page here, which I'm just going to, I think at this point, you're hopefully trained enough to be able to do this between the vocabulary and things that we've done. 
but I'll just kind of give you some of the heads up, the strategies, because these are the same strategies you're going to need for regions questions, which many of these are actually regions questions, are um, to use a combination of pages two in the reference table with the landscape regions, and page three in the reference table that has the water ways that we've labeled and traced on in our activity, but to combine those two pages to find the information we're being asked for. So, for example, number one here, the Appalachian Plateau, uh, significant farming is occurring there, what bodies of water may be affected by the use of pesticides and fertilized in that part of the state. Okay, Appalachian Plateau. If you go to page two in the reference table, the Appalachian Plateau, oh, it's doing the same thing where it stopped cooperating. Um, hmm. Okay, well, we'll try again with the same process here to reopen it. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Appalachian Plateau, page two. Boom. You can see that that is right here. There's your Appalachian Plateau. Okay, and we've got significant farming down in that region. Okay. And we're being asked uh, what parts of New York State, what bodies of water may be affected by the pesticides and fertilizers of the state. So if we go back up here, given that that region that they were just focusing on, the Appalachian Plateau is kind of like here in the reference table. Well, if there's farming down in this region that is involving these pesticides, you could basically say that this water system here is going to be the one affected by it. So whatever waterway you have labeled that, that's going to be your answer for what you're putting in here. Okay? So use pages 2 and 3 to try and combine all these vocabulary and skills and locations by name to uh, find everything that you're asked to do on these discussion questions. Good luck, and I hope this has been helpful.